welcome back to the ledge climbing tutorial series. In the last video, we got the climbing part all set up. In this video, we are going to make it to where our player can climb or hang from any side of any ledge. And that is going to cause us to have to move some things around and create some new code as well. So if we hop over to the event sheet, over here where we are overlapping the ledge trigger, we have it set to where if we press the D key, we can climb up the ledge. But what if we are on the other side? We will have to be pressing the A key to go to the left and climb up that side. I am going to set up a new event here to check for that A is down key. So if we highlight this overlapping trigger check, that'll highlight the whole block and press B to give us another sub event that is indented from our trigger check, but flush with our D is down check. So let's double click into this sub event, go to our keyboard, on key is down, and let's get that A. All right, so we have two different blocks of code here, two different checks. Now we could just take all of this code, copy it, throw it in here, and change some of these values to work from the other direction. But in coding, in programming, anytime you use a same or similar amount of code over and over again, or really more than once, it is ideal to put it in a function. That way you can call that function as many times as you want throughout the rest of your code. And that's what we are going to do here. So I'm gonna close up these groups to give me more room to work here. I'm going to right click in an empty space and add a group. And I'm gonna call this functions. And I'm going to move it up above ledge hang. And then I'm going to right click again and add function. And I'm gonna call this ledge direction or ledge dir and hit okay. And there is our function. I'm going to move this function into our functions group here. So for our ledge hang here, if we call this function more than once, we're going to have to give it different instructions each time it's called because we're going to be placing it in these A and D down check. So we're going to need to differentiate whether it is from the left side going right or the right side going left. So in our function, we can right click on it and add parameter. And this parameter, I'm going to call this facing. And facing is going to be a string. So basically, this is a local variable to this function, meaning that this variable can only be accessed inside this function and we're going to use it to determine if we are facing left or right. So highlight the whole function block and press B to create a sub event. And then we can click to go into it, go into system and scroll down to compare variable. And there's our facing parameter that we created. And when it is equal to in parentheses left, and then I'm going to highlight that whole row, control C to copy, control V to paste. Now we have two different blocks here, two different blocks of code. I'm going to double click into the second one and change left to say right. Now we can call this function in this D is down check, but we're going to need it to do all these same things here. So for facing right, I'm going to need these two pieces of information. I'm going to highlight them click and drag them up into the facing right event. Something that is going to be the same no matter if we are facing left or facing right is this information. So instead of putting all of this in each one of these events here, we can move these up to the first part of the function so that no matter what the parameter is set at, as soon as we call this function, it will set the state to hanging and reset these vectors down to zero. Then it'll start checking to see if the parameter is set to left or right. So we have right set up. Let's go into our D is down and let's call that function. Add an action, go into our functions and down at the bottom is our ledge direction function. And then it tells us to fill in the parameter. Well, we're pressing D so we're going right. Our facing parameter should equal right. Okay, 
So we call the function, we set the parameter to write. So as soon as we call the function, it'll perform this, and then it'll check to see what the parameter is, and then it will run the rest of that code. So everything still works. Nothing has changed, just the way that we laid out the code. Okay, let's go ahead and save while we're thinking about it. And let's go over to our layout. I'm gonna zoom in here and click on our ledge trigger. I'm gonna hold down control, click and drag out a copy. And I'm gonna put it somewhere over on this right side. And I wanna get it pretty close to the edge here. And something like that, doesn't have to be exact. But you do want it to not be higher. You don't want the ledge trigger to be higher than the ledge object itself. Because if your player object overlaps the ledge trigger while you're standing on top of the ledge and you're pressing A or D key, it's going to start running that code. So we want to make sure that we're not touching. In fact, you could even move these down one pixel just to make sure that nothing funny happens. Okay, so now we have a copy. This is, these are both the same object. They're just a copy of each other. We didn't add any new objects. So back in the event sheet, let's go ahead and set up what these need to be for facing left. Now before, we know that our player is going to be at the top edge of the ledge, subtracted 65 to place her up here, and then we added 20 to put her into the right spot. So over here, we need to do the same thing. We'll go here, we'll run that code, then we need to subtract 65, and then we need to move her over 20 pixels. But we have to figure out how to get her location from this side. So in facing left, we can go ahead and really just copy this piece of code right here. So I'm going to highlight the ledge position Y plus 65 and control click and drag a copy up to the left. And then I'm going to add an action, go get our player and go to set value and get our ledge position X number. See down here, we said ledge.x minus 10. Well, if we just reversed it and said ledge.x plus 10, it's going to put us here plus or minus our 65 and then plus 10 from ledge.x. Well, ledge.x is this top left corner. We set the image point to the top left corner. Plus 65 plus 10 or minus 10 is actually going to set us somewhere over here. So we would climb up here and then we just teleport to over here. And we don't want that. So we need to figure out the distance from this origin point to this spot where she's going to be minus that 10 pixels. So in our event sheet, in this set ledge position X from our facing left event, let's go into it. Instead of just ledge x plus 10, let's say ledge x plus the full width of that ledge object. So type in ledge dot width, and then we can add that 10, okay? And then, of course, we're going to have to call the function down here when we press the A key. So add an action, function, ledge direction, and this time we'll go with left, and let's play that. Our right is working, our left is working almost. Okay, so what happens there is when we climb up here, we move it, we play the idle animation, and then we set its position down here in ledge climb. We said set the position to self x plus 20. Well, if we did self x plus 20 up here, which it does, it plays that climb animation, and as soon as it's over, it says self x, which the origin point is still down here for the climb animation, plus 20. So it adds 20 pixels to the right, and then goes back to default, and that's why our character drops over here. So what we need to do is set up a variable that we can call down here, but changes depending on which direction we're facing up here. 
So with our player object selected in the project panel, let's edit the instance variables in the properties, add a new instance variable, and I'm gonna call this one landing position X. So landing POS X, and that is going to be a number. All right, so down here, we set this up for when we were only working on the facing right in our past couple of videos. So we know that this is the position we want for facing right. So self x plus 20 and our self y minus 65. So let's go ahead and set that up. So facing right, add an action, get our player, scroll down, set our value of landing position x to self dot x plus 20. So now this instance variable now has a new value. Let's do the same thing up here for facing left. Let's add an action, go to player, and let's set the value of landing position x to self dot x, and we wanna go the other direction, so that's minus 20. So down here, when we finish our climb animation, we set it to idle, we need this idle animation to be in a different position. Otherwise, it's going to go back to where its origin point is, which is gonna be off to the side down by the ground, and we want her up on the ledge. So go into this position action here, and instead of self x plus 20, we can just plug in player dot landing position x, and that value will be set up here every time we climb a ledge. Let's try that out. It works from that direction and it works from that direction. And we can do it again and go back to the other side and make sure that we can hang and drop. And we can't drop because when we said on D released, we set back to default and the animations, but we didn't say anything about A. So I'm actually just going to copy this one part so with this green arrow next to it, that means it's a triggered event, which means it can be the only triggered event in a block of code. I want to check if the A or D key is released, either one, and then we can run this code. But if I try to add something to this, well, it won't even offer the triggered event. See if I go into it and I go to keyboard and it's not here. I need on key released and it's, it's not there because it's thinking, I wanna say is A and D release, but I want A or D. So we can go ahead and make this an or block. Right click on it and make or block. Now, if I double click to go into it, go to keyboard and there it is, on key released. And I want that key to be the A key. So if D or A is released, that'll trigger all of this, okay? Just to make sure that it works, we can hang, we can drop, we can hang, we can drop, we can climb, hang, drop, hang, climb, good to go. All right, there's actually something I wanna show you. There is a slight flaw in this. I'm gonna play this again, and when we are jumping up and overlapping the trigger sprite here, it's waiting to see if we press A or D. Well, if we're going to the right, of course, we're going to press D, right? But what if I jump up and press A? See, if I jump up and press the opposite direction that I'm facing, it puts me on the other side. And if I do it on this side, I jump up and press D to the right, it pops me over to the other side. It's doing exactly what we're telling it to do. Because we are still overlapping and the key is down, it does not know that we are trying to reference this ledge here but we can tell it to reference that ledge. We can actually check to see if our player is up against this wall or up against this wall. So in our event sheet, on our D is down, if we double click to add another condition, go into our player, scroll down to our behaviors, and is by wall, and if we're pressing the D, we're going to the right, so we wanna check if the wall is to the right of the player. And then down here with the A, Let's double click, go to our player, scroll down, is by wall, that one will be left. Now the condition says, are we overlapping the trigger 
Yes. Okay, we can go to the next one. Is D down? Yes. Is the platform to the right? Or is the wall to the right? Yes. Okay. If we are facing the other direction and it says, is the platform wall to the left? Yes. Is the A key down? No. We tried to press the opposite direction. Oh, well, that won't work. So this isn't true. It won't run the code. Let's try it. I jump up, press the opposite direction, and she goes the opposite direction. Try it from the other side. Looks good. Very cool. All right. Easy fix. Okay. This is the majority of the hanging and climbing mechanic. If this is the only ledge in your project and you only need the one, this will work. This covers everything. However, if we have more ledges with these ledge triggers all over our screen, every time we try to grab onto another ledge, uh, we're gonna run into a bunch of problems and it's gonna teleport our player all over the screen. So we do still need to add a little bit more code and I am going to handle that in the next video. So if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please hit that subscribe button, hit the like button for this video and make sure that you are saving your project that's going to be it for this video. I will see you in the next one.